Alright. So this is what we're starting with. f of x equals log 8 of x. So all of these are going to have a base of 8. So that's going to be the mother function for all of these. Alright? So we're going to utilize the inverse of y equals a to the x. Alright? Negative 1, 0, and 1. 1, 8, 1, and 8. Okay. Now, pretty straightforward. Log 8 of x, nothing being added, nothing being subtracted. So all we're going to do is come down and flip our x's and y's. Negative 1, 0, and 1. And that's it. Okay? These are rational values. So when you have a quiz on this, you'll be told to find x's that give you rational <coughs> values. Does it have to be these? No. But you're dealing with really big and really small numbers. You'd be dealing with 64, you'd be dealing with 1 over 64. Don't think you want to do that. So 1 8 negative 1 would be about there. 1 0, about there. And 8 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to here. Approximately the 8 1. If you kind of want to work backwards with your asymptote, you connect them and realize then it's going to kind of, bottom's going to drop out and it hugs the asymptote like that. As we mentioned yesterday, with logs, the range becomes all real numbers. All right, now, when there's nothing being added or subtracted, the y-intercept does not exist. The y-intercept does not exist. The asymptote, when nothing's being added or subtracted, multiplied, you got x equals 0. And that's related to your domain. x is greater than 0. And then you look at your graph. Even though it's doing it ever so slightly, it's still going up, which means it's increasing. So f of x is increasing. All right. Now we start dealing with some alterations. First one is f of x equals log 8x plus 5. Now, first thing we notice is no parentheses. There's no parentheses. So that means, one, it's a vertical shift. And two, we can keep the same axes. We can keep the same axes. When there's no horizontal shift, we're just going to go with 1 over our base, 1, and then our base. Log 8 of 8 is 1, 1 plus 5 is 6. Log 8 of 1 is 0, 0 plus 5 is 5. Log 8 of 1, 8 is negative 1, negative 1 plus 5 is 4. All right? So again, if there's no parentheses, we're sticking with 1 over our base, 1 in our base. I'm then going to plot them for myself. 1, 8, 4, probably around there. 1, 5, probably around there. And then 8, 6 is going to come out somewhere around here. And again, this hugs. So notice very little change in the graph, and there's going to be very little change in the information to the left. X is still greater than zero. Range, as always, will be all real numbers. The y-intercept, in this case, does not exist. The asymptote is still x equals zero, and it's still increasing. Okay. Now, one thing to keep in mind if you are asked, 1, 0 isn't your y-intercept, but it is certainly your x-intercept. 
So if you're asked to find the x-intercept, there you go, it's the one zero. Good? All right. One third of the way done for the day. We're looking at now negative log 8. And that's a weird looking negative. I know I was criticized before. But the more important thing is the parentheses. Now we do have parentheses. Which means we have a horizontal shift and it's in the opposite direction. Okay. So we're going to take each of our x's from the mother function into the opposite of plus 5, which is minus 5. So the 8 becomes 3. The 1 becomes negative 4. And the 1 8 becomes negative 4 and 7 8. Just so you know, when you take a fraction with 1 and take away an integer value, which in this case is 5, It'll become negative and one less than the number you're subtracting. And then your numerator becomes the difference between your numerator and denominator each and every time. Why we do that is because that gives us rational values. So if I plug in the 3 into here, 3 plus 5 is 8. The log 8 of 8 is 1. Yep. However, what's in front of it? A negative, so we're going to have a negative 1. Notice, I don't handle the negative until the end. I don't handle the negative until the end. When I plug in the negative 4, negative 4 plus 5 is 1. The log 1, log of 1 is 0. The negative has no result. When I plug in the negative 4 and 7 eighths, I got 1 eighth. Log 8 of 1 8 is negative 1, but the negative turns that into a positive 1. So when there's a negative outside, we're just going to flip our sign. Negative 4 is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 3, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 1. And negative 4 and 7 eighths, which is 1, is really close to that. Now, when you do have parentheses, I would strongly suggest you draw your asymptote in first. Alright, so my asymptote is equivalent to my shift. The shift is a negative 5, so x equals negative 5 is my asymptote. I think that's going to be very helpful for you in terms of creating your graph. Because now we can connect our points and then hug the asymptote to give us a good idea of the graph. Everything's to the right of that line, which means my domain is greater than. So x is greater than negative 5. My range is all real numbers. <coughs> now, the y-intercept exists in that. When we go back and work on change of base and do all that, then we'll come back and do y-intercept for that. All right, but let's say we ask for the x-intercept. That would be negative 4, 0. For the time being, we're not going to worry about finding the y-intercept. And the other major difference with that one, instead of going up, it's going down because of the negative. So instead of increasing, that's going to be decreasing. All good? Number 4, f of x equals the log 8 of negative x. Alright, so now I have a negative inside. I have a multiplier. Alright, when you just have that, when you have the log of negative x, all you're going to do is take your 1 8, your 1 and your 8, and do the opposite. So all the positives turn into negative. So when it's just negative x, you have the same basic mother function, you just switch them all to negative. So when I plug in the negative 1 8, the negative of the negative turns into a positive. Log 8 of 1 8 is negative 1. 
When I plug in the negative 1, the negative, the negative turns it into a positive. The log of 1 is 0. And when I plug in the negative 8, negative, the negative turns it into a positive. Log 8 of 8 is 1. I have to do that because I can't find the log of a negative number. If I try to put in a regular value, it's not going to give it to me. Give me an error message. All right. So negative 1 8, negative 1 about here. Negative 1, 0, approximately there, and negative 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1. All right, there's nothing being added or subtracted inside parentheses. So my asymptote is still the y-axis, which means I'm going to hug that axis, and I'm going to connect my point. All right. Well, that has an impact on your domain. Instead of everything to the right, everything is to the left. So instead of greater than zero, x is going to be less than zero. Range, exactly the same. Never crosses the y-axis, so the y at the intercept does not exist. Here's my x-intercept if I need it. Asymptote is at x equals zero. And even though it doesn't go to infinity, we're talking about as it approaches infinity, and that's going to keep going down, so that decreases. Okay. The next to last one, which isn't the hardest one, but can pose a challenge. Because I have a coefficient. My, ex, my recommendation is this. You take whatever's inside parentheses and set it equal to the mother function x's, which are 1, in this case 8, and then 1 8. And solve each equation. If I look at the bottom one, if I add 1, I got 9. If I divide by 2, I got a third x of 9 over 2. If I add 1, I got 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And by mere coincidence, I get 1 there. When I add 1 to 1 eighth, I get 9 eighths. When I divide by 2, I get 9 sixteenths. Whenever you add 1 to a fraction, you add the denominator to the numerator. Whenever you divide by 2, you double your denominator. The result, when I plug in 9 halves, the 2's cancel out, I got 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. The log 8 of 8 is 1. When I plug in 1, 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. The log of 1 is 0. And when I plug in 2, 2 times 9 sixteenths is 18 sixteenths, or 9 eighths. 9 eighths minus 1 is 1 eighth. In other words, I'm doing all the work there and then everything else comes out pretty easy to go time. 9 sixteenths negative 1 about there. 1 0 is there. And 9 halves 1 1, 2, 4 and a half. And you'll notice the shape of the graph remains the same. Because the shape is the same, we go back to our domain being greater than zero. Range, no brainer, all real numbers. Y intercept goes back to not existing. Asymptote is the same as the domain with an equal sign. And that seems to be going up, so that's going to be increased. That is compared to a number being multiplied on the outside. My suggestion to do is you do that last. Alright, now I got a minus 1, which means I add 1 to my x's. So 
So the 8 plus the 1 becomes 9, the 1 plus the 1 becomes 2, and the 1 eighth plus the 1 is just 1 and 1 eighth, or if you want to write it as 9 eighths, you can. It's up to you. When I plug in the 9, I got 8. The log 8 of 8 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. When I plug in the 2, I got 2 minus 1, which is 1. The log 8 of 1 is 0. 0 times anything is still 0. And when I plug in the 1 and 1 eighth, I got negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. What that does is it changes your rate of increase or decrease. So two zeros here, so that spreads out a little bit. One and one eighth being negative two is kind of there. And then nine two is kind of up here. So you're still going to get the same shape. It just starts going up quicker. Domain x is greater than zero because nothing's being added or subtracted outside. Range is all real numbers. Y intercept does not exist. Asymptote equals zero. And once again, it seems to be increasing. 